Um, so, you know, December is always this time of, you know, normally under a normal year, we have this this time of craziness around the holidays. And um, there's, there's always this stress if you are a gift giving person or a gift receiving person in this time of year around um, all the expectations. And I think one of the greatest gifts of this pandemic, well, not one of the great, a gift of this pandemic um, is really learning how to simplify and having trying to pare down and really hone what's important. One of the things that my family has done this year, my parents who have 16, they have seven children, 16 grandchildren, I think six great grandchildren, you know, I come from a big family. And this year, my parents have um, said no gifts and we're to see my nieces and nephews um, kind of come out and say what they want their charity to have choice to be. Um, and I think this sense of giving and letting the flow of giving just keep going. If you can slip into the stream of that without it being obligatory or financially straining or um, ex energy exhausting, you know, when we when we slip into the stream of giving, not just financially giving, but any kind of giving. Um, and we do this with uh, with an abundant heart and an open um, give and take, it can be a really beautiful aspect of our connections with each other. So I wanted to read something to you about the art of giving. Um, Colorado Gives Day is next Tuesday. So if you have any of your favorite Colorado organizations that you like to donate money to, um, there's matching funds next Tuesday. So it's a good day to, to schedule a donation if that's in your world. Okay, so once again, I'm reading from Constellations by David White, and this is his little musings on giving. Giving is difficult, is a difficult and almost contemplative art form that has to be practiced to be done well. To learn to give is almost always the simple, sometimes heartbreaking act of just giving again. To stop giving in any situation is to call an end to relationship. Giving is, is an essence of existence and a test of our character. It asks deep questions about our relationship to others, to ourselves, and strangely to time itself. All gifts change within the, with the maturation of their recipients. To give well, appropriately, and often is to establish a beautiful seasonal symmetry between the urgency within us that wishes to be generous and the part of the world that is suddenly surprised and happy to receive. To give generously, but appropriately, and then most difficult of all, as the full um, act of the art with feeling in the moment and spontaneously has always been recognized as one of the greatest human qualities. Giving means paying attention and creating imaginative contact with the one to whom we are giving. It is a forum of attention itself, a way of acknowledging and giving thanks for the lives other than our own. The essential deed is done through the door of contemplation of the person, the charity, the cause, finding the essence of the need, the person or the relationship. Out of this image comes the surprise of understanding and the ability again to surprise the recipient by showing that someone else understands them and through a display of giving virtuously can even identify needs they cannot admit themselves. The full genius of gift giving is found when we give with what a person does not fully feel they deserve, but that does not overstretch the point. It is the appropriate but surprising next step in their lives. It disarms and moves and empowers all at once while gratifying the one who gives beyond most everyday satisfactions. To give is the most, I'm sorry, to give is to make an imaginary journey and put oneself in the body, mind, and the anticipation of another. To give is to make our own identities more real in the world by committing to something specific in the other person and something tangible that could represent that quality. 
To give is also to carry out the difficult task of putting something of our own essence into what we have given. The perfect gift may be tiny, inexpensive, but accompanied by a note that moves the recipient. It can be enormous, extravagant, and jaw-dropping as a courageous act of flamboyance and devil-may-care love. But to give appropriately always involves a tiny act of courage, a step of coming to meet, of saying, I see you and appreciate you, and I'm also making an implicit promise for the future. Little wonder then that the holiday giving that is none of these, that is automatic, chore-based, walking around the mall-based, exhausts us, debilitates us, and in the end is quite often so subtly insulting to the one we eventually give the random item to. Better to spend a long time sitting in our armchairs in silent contemplation of those we want to gift, looking for the imaginative doorway that says, I know you and I see you, and this is how I give thanks for you, which may bring us to the perfect object, but more importantly, bring us instead to possibly write a short felt, heartfelt message that acknowledges their place in our lives. So go ahead and close your eyes and think about um, the art of giving. You know, we often think giving is re easier than receiving. And for some of us, that is true, but if not for everybody. So if you have a trouble kind of finding that connection to others through the art of opening your heart creatively, imaginatively in the giving spirit, see if right now you can allow your heart to open. Think of someone that you would like to offer a gift to. And I, I don't mean a tangible, physical thing. Who do you want to gift a bit of your energy from your practice to today? Well, let's practice the art of giving through our yoga practice. So, you know, at the end, we offer out our practice. And let's choose now, before we even begin, who this person today is going to be. And notice that when you contemplate this person, it is an act of connecting, of being in relationship, of developing gratitude and understanding for who this person is, what they mean to you and what they need. So let your art of giving your open heart be a deep connecting force. And as you drop into the body, see if you can feel spacious, letting your heart open, letting all your joints open, letting your skin be soft, your eyes, anything that helps you slip into the stream of that abundant space that giving is. And as with most things, Really, we aren't giving anything. We are really just slipping into the stream of energy. So as you feel yourself be there, notice what it feels like. Do you enjoy being a little bit more connected to this person? Do you enjoy the sensation that you're feeling in your body, in your mind? Does it feel good? So perhaps if you are in a season of trying to figure out the obligatory gifts, maybe instead you can have a handwritten note that you can send to someone you love or a simple energy exchange. Let's place our palms together and right away let's dedicate our class today Hold this person in your heart. And let's release our hands and come onto your back. All 
right, so stretch your body out and lengthen. Okay, so maybe reach um, your arms overhead and just come into what feels nice to open up the sides of your body. What is this offering to your breath? Can you allow your breath to be, um, you know, rev the engines a little bit, start to get the breath moving in your body. Bring your yogic breath to play. Bring your awareness of your breath. And then bring your knees into your chest. And let's rock a little bit, moving from side to side. Feeling a sense of ease as you <clears throat> feel your spine soften on the floor. And then let's go ahead and circle the knees a couple of times. And just pay attention to your SI joints, your sacrum. Notice how things are feeling today. How's your body? And then go the other way, circling. How's your energy level? Did you sleep well last night? Maybe not so much. Is your stress level high today? Um, you know, isn't it amazing kind of how we've all adapted a bit to an increased level of stress this year? So just notice how that's impacting you. Let's go ahead and open your knees out to the sides and bring them back in and pay attention. We're gonna get into the hips a little bit today. So let's just pay attention here. How are your hips feeling as you start to feel the range of motion that's available in this plane? Do you have one hip that feels differently than, you know, do they feel the same or different left and right? And then take your feet wide apart on the mat. Feel the outside edges of your mat with the pinky side of your foot. And let's windshield wiper your knees left and right. And feel free to enjoy the upper body in this so you can stretch the other arm, the opposite arm away. Maybe even turn your head. Just come into, you know, when you say we're going to work, when I say we're going to work with the quote unquote hips, that's like a big statement, right? There's so many aspects of your hip joints that, you know, it's just your hip joints themselves, but also, you know, the way your pelvis is and there's just so much involved. So let's just feel what we're feeling here. And now we're gonna find a twist. So drop your knees over to the left. You might need a block for this. Let's pick up the left foot and put it to the outside of the right knee. If you need a little support underneath your right knee or your left knee, go ahead and take it. And just allow for some stretch along on the side waist a bit, the outer hip a bit, maybe even the iliacus and the inner rim of the hip bone. Just see what's here. Take a deep breath into your body. Let your exhale go. And then come on up. Undo that, a little shake from side to side, and then we'll repeat that on the second side. So feet are wide on the mat, drop the knees right, pick up the right foot and put it to the outside of the left knee. Now for some of us without support, that can be a lot of tweaking on the low back. So grab a block and stick it underneath either your left knee or the outer right knee um, if your body needs that. And just see what is working for you. Open up the breath, try not to over arch your low back, stay in the neutral zone. Breathing well. And then let's go ahead and bring our knees back up, knees to chest, check in with your low back, have that make it feel, rock a little bit, and then open your body up to a starfish, spread out your wings, arms and legs wide, wiggle your toes and fingers while you're out there on the edges, and then draw your knees and chest and chin in, give a good tuck. A couple of times more, breath in to expand wide, Feel free to do some squeezing or breath holding if that's what your body's calling for. On your exhale, draw in. Feel expansive, whole body open. Exhale, whole body closed. All right, let's go ahead and keep the right knee into the chest. Stretch your left leg long on the floor. Feel some deep compression in the hip joint. Roll around your ankles if it feels nice to do so. Extend the spine. All right, and then we're gonna bend your left knee and put your left foot on the floor. Grab onto your right foot and come into half happy baby pose. Now, when we do something asymmetrical like this, we often tip off to the side. See if you can keep some stability in the left side of your pelvis. 
And then start to draw down your knee. Feel your foot lift up into your hand, your knee drop down. And then unwind that, stretch that right leg all the way out on the floor, left knee into the chest. Give some good compression into that hip joint, extend the spine, wiggle around the ankles or feet if you want. Check in with your breath, find your yogi breathing. Soft shoulders. And then when you're ready, bend your right foot, put that foot flat on the ground, half happy baby pose with your left. So hold on to the bottom of your foot. And of course, if this is too deep, you can hold behind your knee. Just take the pose however your body is able to take the pose. Extend the spine. Find your breath in, find your breath out. Okay, and now we're gonna come into a full happy baby pose. So join the right foot up there and match the left. Feel free to rock a little bit, getting into some deep compression in the hip joints. And see what it feels like to drop the tailbone, the very bottom tip of your tailbone toward the floor, the top of your sacrum up just a little bit away from the ground, widen the sit bones. And then we're going to take the soles of the feet together and lay our feet down, the Baddha Konasana, Supta Baddha Konasana. Take your arms out to the side. See what it might feel like to not have any support for a moment and just notice what's here. Is there any, you know, do you feel that one knee drops down way further? And if you get that sensation, pick up your head and see if your inner sensation matches your outer body. Is that, you know, knee dropped way lower than the other one or is it just an internal feeling that you have? All right, let's bend the knees, bring them toward the chest, roll over onto your side and come up onto your hands and your knees. Okay, so find your way onto all fours. Find your breath here and see what's happening in your spine. Start moving into some cat cows, arching and rounding and taking your time. Finding the breath. What does it feel like to have a sense of fullness where you're feeling from the tips of one side of your spine to the tips of the other side? All right, and then flatten your back for a moment. Pick up your feet and let's rock the feet. So we're gonna roll on our knees. So if you don't like this, if your knees don't like this much pressure, keep your feet down and instead move your torso from side to side. Let's see what it might feel like to pick up your feet and rock your feet in the air from left to right, just opening up some of the muscles in the low back, getting some things warmed up, some ligaments warmed up. All right, and then put your feet down. Anterior tilt the pelvis, so sit bones high and wide and drop back towards child's pose here. Feel some deep compression in the hip joints again. And notice, you know, maybe you don't go down very far because of knees or hips, but see if you can find some symmetry no matter where you end up. Walk the hands over to the left side of the mat. Take advantage of the sensation in your rib cage. Get to know the breath a little bit. Relax the base of the skull. Take advantage of all your space that you're creating for breathing. And let's go ahead over to the other side. Relax your forehead down onto the floor. Deep breath in, deep breath away. And let's go ahead and come back up onto your hands and knees. Right arm lifting high to the sky, drop the shoulder down, gaze toward the floor, feel the space between your rib cage melt through the skull, melt through the shoulder. Inhale, reach that arm all the way back up, place the hand down onto the ground and change sides. Lifting the arm, left arm to the sky, slide that shoulder underneath, gaze toward the floor. Deep breath in, deep breath out. What can relax here? What's tense that doesn't need to be? And now, arm back up to the sky, place the hand down and find your way 
two dog pose. Oh boy, enjoy. So, you know, you can, when you get into a full pose like this, you really start to feel like, oh, I'm in my practice. So what does it feel like to be here? Can you melt your head? Do you feel that sense of yielding? Are you connecting to the earth? Do you have some space in the body, awakeness in the body? What's feeling nice? What are you giving gratitude for inside of yourself? All right, and then walk your feet forward and fold in half. Bend your knees as much as you need to so that your spine has room. Inhale for a halfway lift. The tops of the thighs press back. Exhale and melt and fold again. Push off your feet and rise all the way up, reaching the arms to the sky. Take a big open chest opener here. Maybe lean back if your body is comfortable, your arms can be out or cactus. Just open the heart, open the heart. And exhale and release your arms down. Shrug your shoulders up toward the ears and then let them go. Pause here for a moment, feel your yielding. Let's just take a moment to give something to our future selves. So how can you treat yourself in your practice with utmost respect and care so that, you know, whatever place that you tend to repetitively ignore little hints or whispers talking to you is your future self. Can you give a gift to your future self by not ignoring those little whispers? Take a breath. Arms up and wide, exhale and fold all the way back down, relax your head. Inhale for a halfway lift, exhale and melt back down. Step your left foot back, right foot comes forward, finding a lunge. Enjoy your body, enjoy your breath. See what it feels like to be in a lunge. Start moving however you want to move, bending and straightening the front knee, warming up the legs a little bit, just accessing some sensation in your muscles that give you a sense of place inside of yourself. Here you are in this moment, this, this body right here. Let the sensations you're feeling anchor you into presence. And walk your back foot forward. Inhale for a halfway lift. Thigh bones are moving back. Exhale and fold again, soft knees. Step your other foot back, left foot forward, right foot back, feeling your lunge. Open the hip flexors with that back leg, feel the compression in the front hip and start to move as you're ready. Squaring the hips, tuck your chin as you straighten your leg and it's okay to not go all the way straight. Stay within a range of motion that's safe and healthy, but you know, also not um, backing away from a little challenge. So. Make sure you're stretching to your edges and not going past, but also not shying away. Stay fully committed to your presence. How's your breath? Okay. All right, let's go ahead and walk the back foot forward, fold in half. Are you starting to loosen a bit? Halfway lift, the spine grows, the legs are straight, the sit bones high and wide. Feel the arch, stay here for a moment. Feel the arches of your feet. Lift up toward the hip groins. Feel the extension of the legs, the sit bones high, the feet grounding. And then exhale and melt a little bit. Fold and bend your knees. Let's take our feet to the edges of the mat, so a little wider than hip width, and go ahead and come to a squat. So depending on your knees, you might need to stick your butt against a wall. You might need to be kind of high where you're not going very deep into this. And avoid going down all the way to garland pose. So we're not um, taking our, you know, we're just having the, the lowest I want you to go is your hips and knees lined up to each other. Feel the work now. So root into the feet, press into the big toe mounds, the pinky toe mounds, the inner and outer heels. Feel the roots grow from that as you move into the earth. Feel the compression in the hip joints. Extend the spine, finding breath. Finding breath, wide sit bones. Notice if you have even weight in your hips, even weight in your heels, in your knees, are you weight bearing the same left and right? All right, and then come on up, straighten the legs, open up, lean back a little bit if it feels nice. If you're dizzy, just take a moment, come back to the midline, fold in half when you're ready. Let's step back to a plank pose, find, the deep inner line. Okay, so hug toward it. 
Engage your core, start to wake up the center of the body. Deep breaths in, deep breaths away. Let's put our knees down, come all the way to the floor, however you nicely get there for your shoulders. Open up Cobra Pose. Remember, all your poses are in the range that's healthy for your joints. Come on down on the exhale twice more. Inhale, rise up to a Cobra. Exhale and come back down. Are your legs stable? Is your core engaged? Or is your pelvis stable? All right, let's hang out here. If you're on the wood floor, scoot over to the right side of your mat. If you're on a carpet like me, it doesn't really matter very much. Let's go ahead and bring the left knee high up toward your armpit and come into sphinx arms. So the forearms on the ground. Feel the compression in the hip joint here. We're warming up into some rotation, or not rotation, but um, you know, getting the hip out there. So feel the drop, like you have a sandbag on your left sit bone, on the outer, like you have someone's hand on the outer hip, moving it into the earth. Try not to overarch the lumbar spine. And we're gonna turn this into a twist, into a twist. Lie down, take your right arm up over your head. And I run out of room when I do this, but just go ahead and find your way over into a twist. We're gonna let the left knee leave the floor. Open your chest so that your arm or hand comes down onto the ground. Enjoy the openness across your chest. Breathe well. And then come back to center. We're gonna straighten our leg and switch sides. So if you need to scooch to the other side of your mat, um, if you're, you need the mat for padding, go ahead and bring your right knee high up toward your armpit. Take the forearms on the floor. Stay as low as your body needs to be. Try not to overtax the lumbar spine. Stretch your hip, your hip flexors of that back leg. Stretch the leg. Feel some weight come into the left hip. Feel the length of your spine. Engage through your core so you're stabilizing the low back and not falling. Find the breath. And now from here to find our way over, we're going to take a big twist here. Let the knee leave the floor, we're rolling over so that our head looks up toward the sky, maybe even turn toward your right hand. Deep breath across your chest, let the knee leave the ground. Try not to have a tug of war between your shoulder and your knee. And let's come back, straighten your legs on the floor, come up onto all fours, have a moment of any kind of movement pattern that's gonna release your spine from the twisting. So maybe a cat cow, maybe just a cat, a scared cat, maybe some swivels, just see what feels good for you. Curl the toes under, find your way back to dog pose. Spread out the hands, Close your eyes for a minute. Go inside, feel the yielding, feel the breath. And then when we're ready, let's lift the right leg high in the air. Stack your right hip over your left. Feel the space in the front of the hip joint. Try not to collapse the left armpit down. Lift underneath the left armpit and stretch the left femur bone back. Take the right hip back to square. Take a deep breath in, knee to nose. You can always put your back knee on the floor for this. Inhale, bring it back, three-legged dog. Exhale, put that foot down. Let's change and do the same thing on the other side. So lift up your left leg, stack your left hip over your right, lift under your right armpit, take your right femur bone up and back. Find the softness in your neck. Even weight in your hands. Deep breaths here. And then when you're ready, square the hips again. Exhale, knee to chest. Inhale, bring it on back. Place your foot down onto the ground, both knees onto the floor. Come back towards child's pose. Take your arms down at your sides and roll your wrists around a little bit. We're coming back onto our wrists. We won't spend a ton more time there, but just have a moment to roll your wrists out. Remember, anytime we're doing a plank anything, if your hands, if your wrists are not happy campers, you can always put your forearms on blocks, 
you can try taking your fists. I wouldn't recommend this for what, where we're going. I would, I would recommend either staying on all fours or putting your forearms on your blocks if you can't have your hands. The other thing that you can do, so you know, if the flexion of your wrist, you know, really deep flexion is bothersome, but a little bit of flexion is not, you can take another mat or a roll towel or something you got and you know, find a little bit of height so that when you have your hands, you can have the heel of your hands up on a little bit more height and the fingertips a little bit lower than that. And this will change the flexion of your wrist joint to be a little less. So sometimes just having a little support underneath the heel of your hand can make a difference for your planks. So let's come back to a plank, however you're gonna get there. Remember, you can put your knees down on the floor or forms on the ground or on blocks to help you. Find your breath. We're gonna do some mountain climbers here. So we're going to bring our one knee up and then stretch it back to a plank. And then the other knee up and then stretch it back to a plank. So we're just gonna go from one side to the other. If you really wanna be off your hands for this, you can do this standing. Imagine that you're in a plank in the air and you can bring your knee up and you can bring your other knee up. So you can, you can do this standing up in the air. You can do this against a wall so that you are um, not as much weight bearing on your hands. Okay, so there's lots of choices. Keep going. Climb a 14er. So just bring your knees up. Make sure you're breathing. Lots of work in your obliques, but really just getting into the compression of your hips as much as you can. All right, relax, come back, walk your feet forward, come into Uttanasana, grab onto your elbows, let your hands relax, bend your knees as much as you want. Inhale for a halfway lift, and then exhale and relax, push off your feet, rise up. Let's turn sideways on our mat. Okay, so come with your legs wide. Okay, we're gonna turn our toes out. Uh, most of you have done this with me before. We're just gonna go in some circles. Okay, so your circle could look like this where you're just bending a little bit and going over to the other side, or your circles could be much deeper where you're swinging um, up with your torso, you can do a full, you know, spin with your torso up. Just make sure you're protecting your back when you're doing this and you're not taking, um, you're not using the back to do the work. You want to use your legs. Okay, so as you bend into one knee, slide over to the other side, push off, reach up. We're going to go both directions. So, a couple more times this way. Warming up all the muscles, your glutes, your inner thighs, your hamstrings, your quads, your outer hips. Okay, and let's pause at the top, find your breath. Put your arms down if your breath is restless. Breathing, long exhales, and let's go the other direction. Finding your way up. Finding your way down, just transfer your weight. So depending on your knees, you may need to go kind of high. Um, balance with the knee that's a little more vulnerable. So if you have one knee that doesn't like to bend and one that, that does, don't go, you know, like opposite into depth. Try to match the one that is a little more vulnerable. Finding your breath. Relax the shoulders. Use all your leg muscles. There's, your leg muscles are so strong. So let them be um, fully engaged. They like to work, whether or not your mind thinks that it's not true. Your leg muscles, that's their job, they like it. Okay, and then we'll pause at the top. Hands down if your breath is restless. Breathing deeply. Turn your feet in now and come back into so hands can be on the floor, head can be on the floor, head can be on blocks, hands can be on blocks. Doesn't matter how far you go, just go where you are. Relax your neck. Feel your sit bones widen. Be really mindful to not overstretch the hamstrings. Make sure you're feeling this in the belly of your muscles instead of in your attachments behind your knees or at your sit bones. Okay. All 
right, let's go ahead and find our way back up. Turn your foot, your right foot out, and let's come into warrior two. So remember, for warrior two, you know, we're losing that, you, you know, it used to be that yogis would say, try to squeeze yourself between two panes of glass. I'm sure you've all heard that cue. I have said that cue years and years and years ago. So let go of that. We are not two, we are not flat Stanley. You know, we are not one dimensional beings. We are three dimensional beings. Let your hip turn as much as you need to so that your pelvis feels nice and healthy and happy. Then take the top of that back femur bone, the, the top of your femur bone in your back leg, draw it back, inner spiral. Feel the lift of your spine. Who cares how deep you go in your lunge? Go where your body is stable. Go where your breath can be here without being restless or agitated. Go where you have a sense of freedom, where the effort matches the ease that you're not overdoing or underdoing. Stay fully present in your body. Find all your little nooks and crannies that are a little bit hidden from your view. Go there. Feel your feet. Feel the work of your hips. Use your feet to work your hips. Make sure your pelvis is turned to a place where you're not having a tug of war in your SI joints. All right, let's go ahead and stand up. Reverse your triangle pose. Reach that arm and then tip over just a little bit. So this is a big stretch for your hamstring. So be really mindful that you're not going too deep. And if you go deep, what, how do you go deep? Do you turn, do you, you know, what, what do you compensate with? Can you allow the pelvis to be stable, the feet to be grounded, so even weight? Can you feel the connection between your crown and your back foot? Deep breaths here. Okay, come back up again, elbow on the knee. Our little trifecta, warrior triangle and partisal konasana. They're such great poses to incorporate into your practice as often as you can, like daily practices. Feel the openness. There's so few things we do during the day that move our hips in this way. You know, we're very forward moving, like walking and sitting and all the things we do. So when we, we don't go out to the sides or rotate as much as we might. So enjoy the opportunity to move your hips in a new way. A novel way, an unfamiliar way from the 20 other hours of your day, or I don't know, how, it depends on how much you sleep, right? Breathe. All right, let's come on up. Turn your feet back and walk your feet in for a minute and bounce. Just let that one side go, and you don't have to leave the floor, your feet can stay on the ground. Just pause for a minute and just notice the awareness around your hips and your pelvis. Find your breath and then let's go to the second side. So perhaps you have a hip or a knee or an ankle or something that's a little vulnerable. So remember there's so many ways to support yourself. You can, you can put, if your knee is unstable, you can always have a block against a piece of furniture or a wall to help you keep this knee stable. Okay, so if you have had an injury or you just feel like you're very unstable and wobbly or you're nervous about bending your knee at all, having a little bit of stability with that block can help you go deeper to get the hips to be open and get comfortable being in that open place with a little extra support. So find what you need for Virabhadrasana too or um, if you don't need the block, just be in space. Relax your shoulders. How's your pelvis feeling on this side? So no matter how deep of a bend you're getting into, are you able to allow your sacrum to feel soft and neutral where you're not tugging or pushing or compressing on either side? Deep breaths here. All right, and then let's go ahead and straighten the leg, reverse your triangle pose, feel, enjoy, enjoy your ribs, breathe. And then let's find our way into triangle pose. Open your heart, lift your hand if you want. Try not to hyperextend your knee, let your hamstring have an openness without tugging on the attachments. All 
right, and then we're gonna turn this into Parzo Konasana. So same thing, if your bent knee needs some support, take some support, drop the shoulders down, open across your chest, bring your arm in space where it's comfortable for your shoulder. Even out the rib cage, so you're opening on both sides symmetrically. Feel the roots of your feet. Enjoy the work. So let your, bus, your body, your muscles, enjoy the effort. Relax the shoulders so your neck does not need to effort in this pose. All right, swing back to the front of your mat for dog pose. And as you go there, inner spiral the legs a little bit. So you can even turn your toes in if you want to. And just enjoy symmetry, finding the breath. Deep inhale, deep exhale. Let's come forward into a plank. You can always put your knees down right away. You can hang out without your knees for a while. Whatever feels good, come all the way to the floor. Any back bend that you want. What's your favorite thing to do here? Do you want your legs apart? Do you want your legs together? Do you want your legs on the floor? Do you want to lift them? What about your upper body? What feels best? All right, and then let's go ahead and relax. Come up onto your hands and your knees and move around your spine. All right, so let's go ahead and come on up to stand. Okay. Once again, close your eyes for a moment. Feel your feet hip width apart. Soften your knees, yield your feet into the earth. Get comfortable with roots. We're gonna balance, so get as deeply comfortable with the weight of your right foot sinking. Now, even if you do a tree pose with your foot up in the earth for today, I want you to keep your toes on the floor. So the, the next pose we'll do, we'll, we'll take our foot off the ground. But for now, toes stay on the floor. So you can um, rest your heel against your um, inner leg and just try to open up the knee. So with your we're rooting our right leg, our left knee is opening, bring the arms up or out or wherever you go. Now, just because two feet are on the ground doesn't mean this is easy to balance. So if you need a little support, take a little support. And just find the rotation in the hip joint. Okay, all right, and then go ahead and relax. Bring that knee high up into the chest, lift your heart, and then place that foot down onto the ground. Second side, our left foot is grounding, the knee is soft, the right toes are staying on the floor, the heel can touch up against the inner leg of your left leg. All right, so try not to hike the hip out. You know, we're not, I'm leaning into that leg in a funky way. We're keeping the hip in, the knee soft. Rotate deep. There's so many deep muscles uh, in your hip joint, around your hip joint. So see what's working here to open your knee out while your toes are still on the floor. Lift the spine, see what's feeling good. Maybe your arms wanna go someplace high. Maybe your arms wanna go someplace low. How's your breathing? And you feel that kind of right around the hip joint itself. And then relax two feet, bring that knee up, lift your spine, okay. finding the breath, and then relax and put your feet on the floor. Move around however you want to move. This next one, you might need a little balance support. And if you're gonna do that, I would go against a wall or a piece of furniture with your backside. Okay, so we're gonna do figure four, root into the right foot. We're gonna pick up our left foot like reverse pigeon pose or, or creating the number four in our legs. And then, oh, I didn't even warm you up with the chair pose. Sorry about that. Hopefully those standing poses were enough of a warm up for this. So spread out the bones of your feet. If you need support, you can have your backside against a wall or a hand on a piece of furniture. And if you don't need the support, choose where you want your arms to be. See what it might feel like to widen your sit bones. Feel the nutation of your sacrum. So the tailbone lifts up, the top of the sacrum dips in just a bit. So a little neutral 
lumbar curve intact here. Extend the heart forward. Start to tip forward any bit that your body says is okay. How's your breath? Relax the shoulders. And then come on up and reach the arms to the sky and relax the hands down. The biomechanics of your hip joints are kind of interesting because if you're standing without flexing your hips and you turn your knee out, it's working these muscles. If you flex your hips, now suddenly you're stretching the very same muscles. So find, I find that interesting. See what that feels like in your body. Root the left foot into the ground. Use support with the wall or turn and if you need to. Cross the right foot on top of the right, left knee and start to come down. Now, you know, you might want to do a funky thing with your hip. Keep the hips aligned. Feel the spine grow. Find your breath. If you're trying to, if you guard away from stretching this, you might do weird things like st stick your hip out or over or under arch your back. So just try to find neutral places. Sit bones widen, nutate the sacrum. The lumbar curve is neutral. Feel the crown and tail move away from each other. The heart is still generously open. How's your breath? How far forward do you want to go? How deep into the bend of your knee do you want to be? And then unwind and release that foot down onto the ground. Feel free to move around and let that pose go. Inhale, arms lifting to the sky. Exhale and fold forward, relax. Inhale for a halfway lift. Exhale and melt back down. All right, let's go ahead and come onto our knees for a moment and come onto your back. We're going to do pigeon pose in just a moment, but first let's stretch our quads. So we're going to lie down on our right side. Go ahead, you can always support your head with your arm or with a blanket. Go ahead and grab onto your left ankle and then stretch that knee away. Elbow toward the knee, pubic bone toward the navel. So there's a little core stabilization to hold yourself steady here. Feel your quads stretch. Breathing deep. Okay, and then go ahead and pick your knees up. Roll over onto the other side. Support your head if you want to. Grab onto your right ankle and Stretch your right quad. Being on your left side, stabilize through your core. Your tailbone is moving toward your knee. Your knee is stretching away from your torso. Open up across your shoulder as well. Deepen your breath. All right, and then let's go ahead and relax and come out of there. Roll over onto all fours now, and we're gonna come first just into a lunge. So right foot forward, left foot back. Feel the openness across the hip flexors. So we just stretched the quad, but now get into higher into the hip flexors. Open your body up. Maybe you come up, maybe you twist, maybe you stay down, maybe you wanna come into, um, what's this pose, runner's lunge. Okay, so you decide however, what, what's calling to you. What's calling to you? Okay, and then relax and come back out. Child's pose. Come on up and change sides. So whatever call to you on the other side, first just start in a lunge and you can keep the back knee down, lift it up. Whatever call to you on the other side, Let's have it call to this side too, okay? So try to find some symmetry. So whatever you did on the other side, whether it was a twist or a um, lunge with your knee down or runner's lunge, whatever you ended up doing on that other side, let's try to repeat. Deep breath. Okay, and then relax and come out of there. Child's pose. And we have one more thing to do before the death of pigeon pose. 
sit up um, on your seat and let's come into Supta Baddha Konasana. So, I mean Baddha Konasana, not Supta Baddha Konasana. I like to be on the edge of a blanket for this. Soles of the feet together, hands behind the back. And let's just find our way. Drop the knees, open up the bottom of your feet. Feel the heart be supported by the arms behind you. So try not to overwork the spine. Grab a block. Okay. Let's stick the block between your feet. Okay. So long edge like this in between your feet, long edge of the block. Now hands behind you, you might need to lean back a little bit more. Just feel the inner groins open, drop the knees down, still opening up the bottom of your feet. How's your breath? And then the next step we're going to do is feet on top of the block. Hold the feet so that your spine can grow. Drop the knees. If you need to, you can always bring your hands behind you again. Drop the knees. So there's a little activity. You know, we're working in the pose. We're not just falling in the pose. All right, and then let go of the block. Come back to your Baddha Konasana and see if there's a little more comfort in your Baddha Konasana. All right, so you get to decide. Knees into the chest for a moment. Make a decision whether you want to be in Pigeon Pose or Reverse Pigeon Pose. So if you're in Pigeon Pose, right leg comes forward first, left leg back. Now we've done so much to open the hips. So this might be a very pleasurable pigeon pose for you um, because you might be a little more open than we sometimes are for this posture. So just see um, what's available. And if your knee or hip need, come onto your back and come into reverse pigeon pose. So this is the end of the deep work of the hips. So let it be, a, you know, this is our apex pose right here. This is our culmination of everything we've done to open the hips. Let it be present for you in this posture, whatever you're choosing to do. Can you breathe your way here? Inhaling and exhaling. Use any support that you need. going to come out of there and find the second side. So once again, any support that you need. If you're in pigeon pose, um, support your hips anyway with blankets or blocks that you need. Um, if you are wanting to come deeper and want to rest your head on a block, that's awesome too. So you can do anything you want. You can be as deep as you want. Make sure that your breath is here. Relax the shoulders. If you're in reverse pigeon pose, see if you can still be widening the sit bones, dropping the bottom tip of the tailbone, feeling a neutral lumbar curve, the head rests on the floor. How is your breath? Can your exhales take you just a little deeper? Can you stretch your boundary line? Just a teeny bit more. Don't cross over any dangerous territory. Just be in the boundary, right to the edge of your property line. Like I'm 
If you feel like I'm shortchanging you, stay. And when you're ready, you can come out of there and just lie on your back, bring your knees to your chest and rock. If you want to twist side to side, go for it. I would recommend, well, I'm not going to recommend anything. You can have support underneath your knees if you feel like that might make your hips comfortable for Shavasana. Perhaps lying flat might be better for you. So experiment with what, how you want to be in space to rest. Okay. And do you want your limbs wide away from your midline? Do you want to come close in? See if you can enjoy the awakeness, the aliveness that has come into your pelvis, your hips, and rest within that awakeness. So be consciously aware while deeply surrendering. Breathe well. Melt your shoulders and your neck. Melt all the tension in your face, even your tongue. Relax your hips, feel the weight of your legs.
just begin to deepen our breathing a bit more. Deep inhales, long exhales. Let's move and stretch and breathe. However supports your body best. Eventually finding the way onto your side. Let's use your arms to help yourself upright. Come to a comfortable seat. And probably you might feel a little achy in your hips. So it might be good to walk a little bit today if um, the deep work in the hips is achy for you. Let's just take a moment to enjoy our seated posture and once again bring your awareness, your attention to whomever is in your heart. What would be an appropriate gift for this person of your actions, your thoughts, your heart, your words, maybe something tangible that would not only feed your connection show them your value, their value to you, but also help them expand to understand what their needs might be and to go beyond what, just a teeny bit beyond what they might be comfortable hearing, receiving, being present for. Surprise them, hold them. Let's offer our practice now to them. Namaste. Thank you, everyone.